Hello and welcome to my backyard. Today I'm in my backyard because I've been outside all day, all afternoon. I went into work today and did a little bit of deliveries and afterwards I've came home and I really feel like there's been something lacking in my Christian walk over the past little bit of time now. And as I was sitting at home today, I fell asleep, had a nap and I got back up and I realised what it was. And um, I haven't actually shared my faith with an unbeliever now. <laughs> in a while it feels like and that's unusual for me I normally have a practice of going out on a Saturday and preaching my heart out in the city centre or the streets or anywhere I find I like to go out and make a regular point of doing God's work and of sharing my faith and talking about Jesus so I got on my bike I picked up my backpack picked up my gyroscope my microphone my phone and I thought I might be able to make a video you know Ray Comfort style Ray of the Master where I'm speaking to people about God I've got to be honest got to the park People didn't want to be on camera, no problem. It's not about the camera, this is about sharing the gospel. I work for an audience of one. But ultimately, I really wanted to just spend some time doing God's work, take my eyes and my focus off coronavirus and off myself, and put it back on the hearts of people that I'm meant to love. And so I spent some time in, in Handsworth, well, it wasn't even Handsworth Park, in Handsworth Wood initially. I went into the first park, Butterflies are in my stomach because, you know, it's been a while since you've approached people now. It's been a couple of weeks since I've gone up to complete strangers to speak about God. And you approaching them as a sitting there in the outside and you're trying to gauge how far away you should be from them because of social distancing. And you want to make them feel comfortable more than anything. They said they didn't want to be on camera. I was like, do you mind if I carry on talking? No cameras involved. They were like, okay then. And I started speaking to a Romanian group about what's going on, about where, what do they think about America in particular? Was it wrong of the American people right now to be rioting and protesting? Or was it wrong of the police to kill that innocent man that was already under arrest? Now, I, we know that both, both is wrong. There's nothing wrong with protest, providing it's peaceful. But at the moment, the looting and those kind of things and the civil disrest isn't helping anyone. We should ought to obey the law. But equally, the law have got to be accountable. And so we, we got back and forth and we got into this and I made it entertaining and we enjoying ourselves. And I said, what's the end point? What are they really looking for? And everyone was like, they're, they're looking for justice. They're looking for perfect justice. And I was like, well, we're not going to have perfect justice on this world. And then one of them started to say, so are you saying that it's impossible for them to get fair treatment? I'm like, no, I'm not saying it's impossible, but I'm saying it won't ever be completely fair in this world. It won't ever be fair until we enter into the kingdom of God. And then I started to speak about the kingdom of God and how it's different. About how there'll be no more tears, no more crying, no more weeping, no more pain, no more sickness. Let me tell you something about the kingdom of God. It's going to come, but it's not going to come until Jesus comes. But Jesus says that you can't enter the kingdom of God unless you first believe on him that died and that resurrected. And then I got a chance to really speak about Jesus, about his death his burial, his resurrection, about the joy of serving the Lord and what he does inside of our heart and as he makes us brand new. And I've got to be honest, I got into my zone and I just started to enjoy myself, just speaking and doing the work of God. And that's what I've been missing this week. That's what I've been missing for this lockdown period. It's just those opportunities to worship together as a group that I miss so much and to go out and to share my faith as an individual, me and God speaking to feel the Holy Spirit lead and guide me as I go into the unknown, feeling my heart racing, not sure what's going to come next. The excitement of serving God is unreal and it's an adventure and a journey. I want the Book of Acts experience, but I know it's not going to come if I sit down and I hide in my house all the time. And so I'm taking some opportunities from now on to go out there and to speak and to share my faith. I was speaking with another group, group of young boys, actually, that they didn't want to be on camera. and. Every time I mention certain things, they were deflecting it at one another. And you know, how kids do, it's quite funny. But you know what, I know that they were enjoying the conversation. So we were just having a bit of a chat and then their friends came. And ended up speaking to their friends at quite a length. And it turns out that some of their friends were meant to be Christians. And that attend church with their family. Even churches that believe in salvation, being born again, being filled with the Holy Spirit. Good, strong churches. And as I got talking to them, I could see that they knew the truth, but they weren't there with it. And so I spent a lot of time just encouraging them to stand for the truth and to pray about the things that mean something to them. They're due to go back to school on the 15th. They're all year 10 boys. I said, why don't you prayfully make that decision? You need to be in school. 
but I also understand you're concerned about your family safety. Pray about the decision and ask God what his mind and his will is about the situation. I told them you can't be shy to ask God his mind on things. You can't be afraid to come and pray. There was one of them that wasn't a believer and we were just really talking. Is it right? Is it wrong? Who makes the laws and the rules? I had a real blast today. On my bicycle, I didn't get any video footage, but I tell you what, God was with me and I want him to be with each of us. And so maybe you're feeling lethargic. Maybe you're feeling like, man, I'm desperate to do something for God. You don't have to be on the streets preaching at people. Sometimes just those little conversations make all the difference. In fact, I find that sometimes they're far more effective. I love preaching, don't get me wrong. You can preach to the masses and then God will bring one person to you to really begin to minister. When I think about Jesus' ministry, he was always preaching to multitudes, but then individuals would come to him for healing or for questions or for understanding. And I think it's important that we get a good balance. However, one-on-one -on -one witnessing, oh gosh, it's good for the soul. And it's so good for your spirit. And it's so good for our, oh, it's so good for our body. Just to be led of the Holy Spirit again. And just to let him take control and to face up to our fears, face up to the butterflies, and just to see what kind of conversations we end up in. Sometimes I've been guilty in the past of, when, especially when I was younger, I've just been a bit too direct about everything. Enjoy the conversation with people. If you're enjoying yourself and they're enjoying yourself and you're speaking about God, he will give you the next words. He will tell you and he will put and guide you with what to say and what to do. Don't be too scripted about things. Just go out and enjoy yourself and see what God would speak to you about. You don't even need to go out to do these moments. Next time you go to the park with your kid, if you get an opportunity to talk to someone, don't pass up on it when they're sat on the bench two metres away from your distance, of course. Enjoy it and have that moment with him. So please take the chance to like, subscribe to my channel, Jesus Doctrine.